television, it became clear that Princess Diana and Prince Charles were growing apart. The newspapers would measure the days they spent separated. A book, Diana, Her Story by Andrew Morton, revealed details of her unhappiness. She had developed eating disorders and was even reported to have attempted suicide. Eventually, but out of the blue, the then British Prime Minister John Major announced that Diana and Charles would separate. The British monarchy had not faced such a crisis since the abdication of King Edward VIII in 1936. But the princess was not to be deterred from maintaining her high public profile. Once the couple's divorce was confirmed and freed from the shackles of royal protocol, she began to be seen in public with other men. She focused her official life on several charities, as varied as the Royal Ballet in London and the Red Cross campaign against the landmines. Within the past few months, she had been in Angola and Bosnia to see at first hand the effects of landmines as a guest of the International Red Cross, a stand that courted political controversy. She managed to combine her charitable work with a high-profile social calendar. But it was her liaison with Dodi El Fayed that had seemed to be the most serious since the breakup of her marriage. Tim Lister, CNN, reporting. For more perspective on Princess Diana, we're going to talk now with uh, Robert Hardman. He is a correspondent with the Daily Telegraph who knew Princess Diana. Uh, Mr. Hardman, can you hear us? I can hear you, yes. Tell us, this was a woman who was beautiful, she was wealthy, she was famous, but it seems that the simple happiness of life somehow eluded her. Yes, towards, uh, towards recent times, uh, certainly uh, the princess uh, had gone through uh, a lot of deep unhappiness with the separation first and then the royal divorce. Uh, and then as she was uh, rebuilding her life, uh, obviously uh, a huge degree of media attention, uh, which, which made, in a way, every, every step very difficult. Um, and uh, I, I think, uh, I think the, the, the whole world, really, will be, will be shell-shocked this morning. Yourself your memories of Princess Diana? Well, I just think of this, uh, this extraordinary uh, uh, ambassadress um, for, for Britain, really, and, and, and for the causes that she held very dear. Um, I remember seeing her in countries as far apart as Nepal, as in Zimbabwe, um, last year in Chicago, wherever she went. Uh, there was an aura. There was a. There was this extraordinary sense of here was this person uh, um, who could attract attention um, and, uh, in a way, bring a message that uh, that was uh, that was beyond perhaps politicians and diplomats. She was. Uh, she was one of a kind. The reaction. Your reaction, knowing that uh, as a member of the press. The press had been accused for a long time of harassing Princess Diana. Now uh, it is being reported, of course, that uh, her car in the for, for, uh, final moments of her life was being pursued by paparazzi on motorcycles. They may have, we don't know that, they may have contributed to this accident. Yes, uh, we're, we're hearing those reports at the moment. Uh, I, I think uh, it's far too early to say at this stage to start, to start pointing fingers. I mean, clearly... Uh, she was under intense media scrutiny uh, in recent weeks um, after it was disclosed that she was uh, becoming friendly with Dodi Fayed, and uh, uh, clearly that media pressure uh, didn't relent. Uh, it was continuing uh, in the south of France recently. It was continuing in Paris. Uh, she knew that wherever she went, she was always going to be a subject of intense um, media interest uh, at this stage it's impossible to say one 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 there will certainly be questions to be asked about the role of the paparazzi in this wider questions on the role of the media at large surely people will say it must be the newspapers that uh, provide the market on which the paparazzi feed uh, either dare say there'll be questions asked about uh, about the wisdom of, uh, of, of the princess uh, 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 relinquishing uh, special branch uh, bodyguards uh, a few years ago. Uh, but at this stage, I, I think these questions are, 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 you know, they're way off and, and I think at the moment will probably seem somewhat irrelevant. 
we remain in something, as you said, a sense of shock. Uh, if you will stay there, Mr. Hardman, Definitely. I want to uh, show our viewers uh, the reaction of Foreign Secretary Robin Cook. He was uh, in Manila making a trip through so Southeast Asia here reacting to news of the death of Princess Diana. Uh, I am greatly shocked by this news. Our first thoughts must be with her children and with her family at this time of immense loss to them. Uh, I was fortunate to have the opportunity of working with the Princess on an international charity work. I believe what has happened is a tragic loss at a young age of someone who'd shown great courage and commitment in drawing attention to serious issues. For the next few days, her family and the nation must have time to come to terms with their immense sadness and loss. In the longer term, serious questions will need to be asked as to whether the aggressive intrusion into her privacy has contributed to this tragedy. Thank you. That was Robin Cook, uh, Britain's Foreign Secretary, there reacting to the news of Princess Diana's death. Now, for more on what actually happened in the accident, what took place some eight hours ago, seven hours and a half ago in Paris, let's go to Jennifer West, who has a report and a wrap-up on it. The accident happened just after midnight in Paris. Princess Diana was in a car with her companion, wealthy Egyptian businessman Dodi Fayyad, a driver and a bodyguard. They reportedly had dined at the Hotel Ritz, which is owned by Fayyad's father, Mohammed Al-Fayyad. Other reports say their car was being chased by paparazzi photographers riding motorcycles. Whatever the case, the car carrying the princess and her companions was traveling at high speed when it smashed into a wall inside a tunnel along the Seine River. Eyewitnesses spoke with CNN's Jim Bitterman. We saw a large blue Mercedes, darker blue, and the airbag on the uh, passenger side was deployed, as he said and we saw a lot of um, liquid on the ground and when Tom went into the tunnel to help, um, we didn't know who it was at the time, um, somebody came running towards us speaking French, shouting in French, and we thought for some reason it was gonna blow up in the tunnel. The driver was unconscious, um, sounding the horn for like, probably almost two minutes. Police have opened a criminal investigation into whether pursuing paparazzi photographers in fact may have contributed to the crash. Eyewitnesses tell CNN photographers were on the scene of the accident immediately. Well, initially when I approached the vehicle, the gentleman was, who was taking pictures was there immediately at following the accident. Before I could run from the, the mouth of the tunnel, 50 yards approximately to the 30 yards from the car, he so was the already... Routine within seconds of the oh, crash. Within seconds. And uh, his ca uh, camera equipment was far too sophisticated yeah. for a yeah. tourist. Newsweek Paris Bureau Chief Christopher Dickey described the condition of the car when it was pulled out of the tunnel. It was totally smashed uh, in front. You can see where the airbags, both front airbags deployed, but the car, the front of it is totally smashed in. The area above the windshield is totally smashed down. The, the roof is collapsed on top of both the driver's area and the passenger's area. Uh, and the area on the back, all the glass is broken out, uh, and the right-hand part of the roof has collapsed downward there, too. Police in Paris quickly confirmed that Dodi Fayed and the chauffeur were dead, and the bodyguard was seriously hurt. Diana, reporters were told, was gravely injured. As the hours ticked by, outrage built as people heard the reports paparazzi may have been involved in the accident. And angry actor Tom Cruise told CNN he, too, had been chased by photographers in that same tunnel. I've, I've actually been in that same tunnel being chased by paparazzis, and they run lights, and they chase you and harass you the whole time. It happens um, all over the world, and it, it has certainly gotten worse. About five hours after the accident, Christopher Dickey was at Salpetriere Hospital in Paris when the French government made the official announcement. It's just been announced that Diana is dead. She suffered serious internal injuries. They could not recover, and she succumbed. We were told by uh, a hospital uh, employee uh, making a public statement, and uh, now the uh, French interior minister, Jean-Pierre Chevènement, is speaking uh, and expressing his condolences. All right, Christopher. It is confirmed that she's dead. She succumbed to massive internal injuries. Jenny West, CNN reporting. That is the news as we have it up until this moment. I want to go back to London and talk again with Andrew Roberts of uh, the Sunday Times. Andrew, 
we've talked a little bit about the different questions that are going to be asked, but in your view, what should be remembered about diets? Everyone is going to have a different memory, of course, and there are people in the public that have never met her as you have that will have their own memories. I think so. I think one of the things that people don't seem to uh, remember about her, um, and when they think of the worthy, uh, saintly woman that, uh, that she undoubtedly was, was that she was also a very funny woman. Sitting next to her at lunch, um, you'd be in fits of laughter. It's one, of the, it's one of the most painful things now, now that she's dead, to remember just how uh, the, whole, the whole, you know, if you were having, having lunch, you'd just be roaring with laughter. She was so funny and so quick. She had such a lovely sense of humour. And, uh, and, of course, all that's, that's gone now. It's just so awful. President Clinton saying from Martha's Vineyard that he is profoundly saddened by the passing uh, of Princess Diana. And of course, she had visited the White House many times. She was an unusual ambassador for Great Britain, someone who, through the years, uh, even after, uh, I would say, her breakup, the breakup of her marriage, uh, remained held in very high esteem by people, whether That's in the United States or whether uh, in Latin America or Southeast Asia. No, that's absolutely right. And I think that uh, this is something we sometimes tend to forget when uh, people in Britain are doing down the royal family and uh, doing down the, the, the duties that they, uh, that they undertake. You know, they are, to have a royal family in this country um, is extremely helpful and useful for us to project ourselves into, into the world. People are more interested in Britain because of people like, uh, like Princess Diana. For so many years, Princess Diana was, if you will, a bit of a caged bird, but people who knew her, perhaps you can share this w with us, had she, since she met Dodi al had become a bit more open, a bit more willing to get on with her life and uh, really not take into regard so much what are people going to think about this? I don't think any new change can be dated from having met Mr. Fayed. I think... Uh, uh, that really all this happened after the, uh, after the divorce and from the moment that she was stripped of her title, Her Royal Highness, and therefore no longer became royal, except, of course, insofar as she was the, the mother of the future king. But um, I think that she obviously had got a new direction. It wasn't to do with men particularly. It was, it was internal. It was just to do with her. I don't want to, uh, I want to talk more about Princess Diana, but it is also important, I think, to remember here that Dodi al Fayed, of course, was also in that car, as was a chauffeur. If I could get uh, you, Andrew, to stand by just for a moment, uh, Anne McDermott has a report now that looks back on Dodi al Fayed, explaining who this man actually was. He co-produced or put up money for movies like Chariots of Fire and Steven Spielberg's Hook. And Hollywood people who knew Dodi Fayad said they'd miss him. Well, I was shocked, saddened. He was a bright, studious man, very desirous of making a contribution to the Hollywood community. He did love uh, beautiful women and collected them with great ferocity. One beautiful woman who said she was engaged to Fayad who sued him when it became clear he was seeing Princess Diana. Even she had kind things to say about him before he was killed. Yes, I found him very um, down to earth, very quiet and charming. I, I liked him a lot. Late Saturday night, Kelly Fisher's attorney, Gloria Allred, issued this statement about her client. I'm absolutely devastated. She's in an enormous amount of pain. She's just stunned. Fayad's former publicist reacted to the initial reports that Fayad's car was chased by paparazzi. I think there's going to have to be a significant amount of laws changed now to protect the rights of uh, celebrities. The uh, paparazzi's behavior has gone beyond obnoxious into the criminal, in my opinion. The news was just sinking in late Saturday in the town where Fayad sometimes made movies. Um, it was a great shock. Um, I can't believe that it happened. Ooh, that, that's bad news. Uh, I, was, oh, I didn't know. Oh, I'm so sorry. Anne McDermott, CNN, Los Angeles.
Robert Hardman with the Daily Telegraph is still standing by. Robert, you were vacationing in the south of France. Had you been there at all to cover uh, the, uh, the relationship that appeared to be developing between Princess Diana and Dodi Al-Fayed? No, I'm, I'm some way up the coast from there. I mean, I was aware this was going on. Uh, I must say this took me as much by surprise as it took everybody else by surprise. I, I, I've been away from London for a week and uh, it's, it's quite staggering. Uh, I mean, the, the princess has been down uh, on the French Riviera um, with Mr. Fayette uh, uh, several times recently and on his yacht. Um, it's well known uh, along the Côte d'Azur that, uh, that they've been in the area, but uh, uh, I think they had, a, they had a, a degree of privacy once they were offshore on the yacht. Um, uh, occasionally when they came into shore, of course, the, the paparazzi moved in um, and gave us the pictures which, uh, which, which confirmed that this, this friendship was, was, was happening. But uh, uh, I, I, don't, I can't speak for the south of France at the moment because the sun is just rising where I'm sitting, but I suspect there will be as much shock here as there will be in London, America, and elsewhere around the world. Just how much pressure... Andrew, was she under by the paparazzi? If you can uh, describe it, what it would be like for anyone to have to deal with it. Completely impossible for a normal person to um, get a sense of, um, of normality under that, sort of, uh, under that sort of pressure. I mean, you were just speaking to Robert Hardman, who is... Um, pretty much the most responsible and serious uh, journalist writing on royal matters in the um, in the British press so he is in not in no way personally to blame but some of the other ones some of the other writers and photographers the hypocrisy that is already going on that I'm hearing already of um, people saying oh well this paparazzi doesn't work for me well maybe not entirely you know day to day on the payroll but they certainly sell the pictures they make their um they give these people their livelihoods there's a lot of um of really quite sickening nauseating hypocrisy already starting but as i say i completely absolve robert Hartman himself personally from this because he's the best of the bunch by far all right i want to bring in a correspondent of our own jim bitterman is in paris jim what can you tell us we i understand that there have been some arrests of uh, some photographers there in paris Arrest may be a little bit too strong. At least five people were detained after the accident. Uh, the police also seized, according to the French uh, press service, uh, two motorcycles and a motor scooter. Uh, and they have launched a criminal investigation. Now, it strikes me that there's probably two grounds for that. I noticed uh, earlier we were talking about uh, stronger laws being needed. In fact, France has quite strong laws about, uh, about the protection of private lives. And it, there are uh, laws that would cover this kind of situation. A person who's inter intervening or interfering in someone's private life uh, could, be, could be brought to trial on those uh, grounds. The other thing that strikes me is if uh, there was any law broken in terms of uh, creating the chain of events that led to the accident. Something that should be pointed out, as much as the paparazzi, the photographers may have been the immediate trigger for the accident, it should be noted too that the chauffeur of the Mercedes obviously traveling at a very high rate of speed for this car to have suffered the damage that it did. So uh, there, was, there was also some other fault involved in this. I mean, the, 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 the driver of the car was taking a, a real risk. Jim? What have the police been able to tell you? Any uh, details at all about how fast they think that the car was going? What might have caused the accident? Is it far too no early details. for that? No details at this time. I mean, they've got this criminal investigation going on. The speed limit uh, along that part of the Seine is 70 kilometers an hour, about 42 miles an hour. This was a very large Mercedes, uh, six Mercedes 600 that uh, was, was uh, blown apart by the force of the crash. Now, it was a crash in a very confined area, but one must say that the car was probably doing something over the speed limit to have that much uh, damage incur. Uh, so it's hard to tell at, at this stage exactly how the police investigation will come out, but there, there, are, there are some details here. Also, our, one of our eyewitnesses said that the screeching of tires went on for a number of seconds as the driver tried to bring the car under control. And the force of the impact, as police uh, said, was, was explosive in nature, so much so that the radiator of the Mercedes ended up in the lap of the front seat passenger. That would have been Diana's uh, bodyguard, we believe. Jim? What has the reaction been there this morning as uh, Paris uh, awakes to a, a tragic day? Well, I think that uh, Jean-Pierre Chevenon, the interior minister, summed it up best in the middle of the night 
uh, at the hospital when he announced that uh, Diane had died. He said, in the name of the French government, I express my great sorrow and pain. I offer the condolences of the French people to the royal family. I, I think, uh, in general, this will probably lead to a great deal of outcry about uh, the paparazzi and the photographers, the interference in private lives, uh, the, the way some of your guests have already mentioned. Uh, I think, in a, in a funny way, I think the French uh, feel it will feel kind of a collective responsibility about this. They won't feel very happy that all this took place on French soil. Uh, Diana was, was very well known here. She was covered in the press here. Uh, and it will, will, will not be a mark of shame, but certainly it will be taken on as something that, that, uh, it's, it, that uh, the people will not be particularly proud of that it took place here in France. Just a quick question, Jim. Did you get a chance to see anybody on the streets uh, today as they discovered the news? I know you've been busy. We've had you busy tracking the story down there, talking with the eyewitnesses as you did and talking with police. But any chance to get a glimmer of the hospital workers or the common Parisian? Well, not the hospital. I, uh, uh, Chris Dickey was over at the hospital, but I was down at the scene, and uh, there were a number of people turned out at the scene. Now, uh, Paris is a town that goes all night, particularly on Saturday night, so there are always people on the streets. But there was a small crowd that had gathered, and, and some people had uh, come down, obviously, from their apartments near the crash scene. This is a, a basically a residential area just uh, off the Champs-Élysées, and uh, people had come down to, from their apartments, were standing around in little pajamas and robes and whatnot, watching as the, as the wreck was brought out of the tunnel and it was a terrible scene indeed all right jim bitterman if you stay there we're going to have to take a short break we will be right back as we continue our coverage of the death of princess diana at 36 years of age stay with us This is the place for complete coverage of live breaking news wherever it occurs. This is CNN. When it's dark out, everything moves faster. The lights go on, the fields hotter, the crowds louder, and the intensity boiling up all day inside each player is let loose on the field. Sunday night, NFL on TNT. The best time for football. The coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. To advertise during NFL games, call 733-5812. You've heard a lot lately about plans to protect you from sexually transmitted diseases. The rapid expansion of AIDS and herpes and syphilis demand the best plan available. God's had a plan that works all along. A message of hope from your friends and neighbors at the First Baptist Church of Shalmet. This is CNN. This is CNN Breaking News. I'm Jim Clance at the CNN Center. 36-year-old Princess Diana and 42-year-old Dodi Al-Fayed, along with their driver, were killed in the early morning hours in Paris uh, after apparently uh, being chased at high speed by photographers uh, on motorcycles. Princess Diana was uh, taken to a hospital where doctors tried to save her life. They were unable to do that. Uh, she died uh, just about uh, two, one and a half hours ago. It was announced uh, she died two hours than, uh, earlier than that. Apparently word was held as uh, the sad news was on pass to uh, Balmoral where Prince Charles was staying with uh, 
Princes William, the heir to the throne, and Prince Harry, who's only 12 years old, Prince William being 14 years of age. This is the car in which they were riding. It's a Mercedes-Benz. It was a large vehicle. It hit a concrete pylon at high speed at the Alma Bridge in Paris along the Seine River. It was a French doctor who, hours later, first informed French people uh, of the death of Princess Diana. Let's listen in to that press conference from some two hours ago. At her arrival at the Salpetriere Hospital, she was in a condition of serious hemorrhage and shock. Shortly thereafter, she went into cardiac arrest. An urgent surgery showed a severe wound to the left pulmonary vein. Despite the closure of this wound and a two-hour external and internal cardiac massage, no efficient respiratory circulation could be established, and she died at 4 a.m. Paris time. Princess Di was 36 years old. She had just turned 36 years of age on the 1st of July. Marina Colby has a report on Princess Di. Born Diana Frances Spencer on July 1, 1961, Diana first attracted the public attention in 1981. That's when her engagement to Prince Charles was announced. The couple were married on July 29th of that year. It was a fairy tale like wedding that garnered the attention of the world. Less than a year later, Diana became a mother with the birth of Prince William. On September 15, 1984, Diana became a mother for the second time with the birth of Prince Harry. But what seemed a fairy tale marriage to the world was disintegrating behind the walls of Buckingham Palace. In the early years of the marriage, Diana outshone her husband on nearly every occasion. In 1986, the first press stories began speculating that the marriage was in trouble. Biographer Andrew Morton wrote in Diana her true story that Charles had begun an affair with his former girlfriend, Camilla Parker Bowles. Diana, too, began an adulterous relationship with cavalry officer James Hewitt. She said she adored him. Charles and Diana separated in December of 1992. It has turned out to be an annus horribilis. That year, Queen Elizabeth referred to 1992 as a horrible year. Despite the separation, Diana insisted she did not want a divorce. But after more damaging press stories in November of 1995, Diana gave a highly critical interview in which she admitted her affair with Hewitt and said she believed Charles would not make a good king. After the interview, the queen, in effect, ordered her son to divorce Diana. The princess agreed to the divorce in February of 1996, and the final decree was given in August of that year. Diana continued to maintain a high profile following the divorce, but her private life remained quiet until she went public about her relationship with Dodi Fayed earlier this month. Diana campaigned for a ban on the use of the landmines and worked for many charities. She once said she wanted to be a sort of ambassador, a queen of the people's hearts. To many, it's how she will be remembered. That report on Princess Di. In case you've just turned in, uh, tuned in, we wanted to uh, update you with the story that we have been following for the past several hours, and that is the death of Princess Diana of Britain, along with her companion Dodi Al Fayed, uh, an Egyptian millionaire, the son and heir apparent of Mohammed Al Fayed, uh, the owner of the Harrods department store in Britain. Uh, their driver was also killed in the early morning hours in Paris after having left the Ritz restaurant. Uh, they were driving along the Seine River and at the Alma Bridge uh, being pursued by, apparently being pursued by photographers aboard motorcycles. The car in which the princess and Mr. Al Fayed were riding went out of control. It struck a concrete pylon. It smashed. Uh, according to some of those on the scene, it appeared that uh, some of the people may have been killed uh, almost instantly. Princess Diana was taken to a hospital in Paris, but there several hours later, doctors pronounced that they could not save her life. She suffered uh, massive injuries as a result of the high-speed crash. I'm going to go back now to Paris and to CNN's Jim Bitterman. Jim, your thoughts now. 
Well, Jim, you know, one of the things we've been talking about is uh, the press's role in all this, the paparazzi, the photographers who follow celebrities like Diana. One of the things she said just a week ago in Le Monde, the newspaper here, she said the press is ferocious. It pardons nothing. It only hunts for mistakes. Every motive is twisted, every gesture criticized. It's what was on Diana's mind just a week ago, and probably the kind of feeling that must have been going through her mind earlier tonight in Paris as paparazzi were once again pursuing her uh, with her, her friend, uh, Dodi El Fayed, uh, uh, through the streets of Paris. Um, three people died in that crash. Only her bodyguard uh, survived. He's in grave condition at the hospital this evening. Uh, we don't know too much more about his condition, the kind of injuries he suffered. We believe he was sitting in the front passenger seat, and uh, the French press service re reported that the accident was so ferocious that the radiator of the Mercedes ended up in his lap. Jim? All right, that gives us an idea uh, of how bad that was. Had the, uh, tell me this, had the French press been covering her visit there? They certainly have, and, and the famous photos from a couple of weeks ago of the embrace between uh, Dodi El Fayed and, and Princess Diana uh, made the front cover of uh, Perry Match, one of the very popular photographic magazines here. Uh, it has been uh, closely reported. Uh, as I mentioned, however, Diana gave an interview uh, last week to Le Monde, and in that interview, uh, she attacked the press and, 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 and portrayed this feeling of being hunted by them. Jim Bitterman, as you uh, have been following this story tonight and talking with the eyewitnesses, I want to take you back just a little bit to uh, where we were some hours ago, still keeping a vigil. But how the accident occurred, what people could tell us then about uh, what had happened there in Paris. What kind of a scene is it? Well, to get an idea, this is a road that I frequently travel uh, back and forth on. It runs along the Seine. It's a very quick way to get in and out of Paris. It's, uh, it's called the Voie Georges Pompidou, which is uh, the, the Georges Pompidou Way, uh, uh, named after the former president. It runs along the Seine, sometimes almost at water level, sometimes rising to the surface, and occasionally going through tunnels. And this was uh, one of the tunnels where the accident occurred this evening. Uh, these tunnels are, can be very dangerous places. The other thing that makes this, this way very dangerous is that uh, nobody seems to respect the speed limit very much. Uh, the speed limit's posted at 70 kilometers an hour, about 40 miles an hour, and uh, people s frequently seen going 120 kilometers an hour, 130 kilometers an hour uh, along the Seine if there's no traffic. And this was Saturday night after midnight. There likely that there was no traffic so that the driver could have sped along at, at quite a high rate of speed. Uh, certainly the damage to the Mercedes 600 was substantial uh, when the car went out of control, so it, it would indicate that the car was going at, at some rate of speed when the, when the accident took, took place. Immediately afterwards, a couple of police arrived on the scene. They blocked off the, uh, the tunnel, uh, and bystanders uh, began forming around the, the both entrances to the tunnel. Uh, police were hours in, in uh, getting the wreckage out. Uh, we believe that, uh, that the driver of the car and Dodi El Fayed were pronounced dead on the scene. We haven't, that has not been confirmed as far as I know. Uh, and that uh, Princess Diana was rushed to the hospital uh, where doctors uh, made a desperate attempt uh, to, to save her, but uh, her bleeding from internal injuries was just too, too massive for them to, to save her. Jim? Talking again about the reaction, you had mentioned earlier that you think Parisians, all of the French people indeed, w will find it sad in a way that it happened in France. Why? Well, I, I think so. I mean, there's a couple of things. First, there is a, a, a law to protect private lives in this country. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think that some of the royal family a few years ago actually sued under that law in France and won a judgment against uh, some of the photographers who, uh, who were pursuing them. Uh, there is a law to pr protect privacy here. It's a question of enforcement, really. Um, and I think that uh, that's one part of it. The other part of the equation is sort of the responsibility that one has uh, as a host country for uh, the royal family of another country uh, for, for something untoward to happen on French territory is, can be seen as kind of a blight on the, on, on the nation as a whole. I, I'm not sure how responsible the average Frenchman in the street will feel. But, but certainly the royal family was very well known here. Uh, 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 Princess Diana was over here frequently. Prince Charles was here uh, very recently uh, for, the, for the 70th birthday of Rasta Probert right here in Paris. So they're, they're familiar fixtures here on the on the scene in Paris and uh, so I, I think there, there'll be a, a real outpouring of reaction once the Parisians get up and, and understand what's happened uh, overnight. 
Jim, if you stay right there, talking about the reaction, I want to switch now and go to London, where Prula Warren is standing by with some reaction as Britons get up this morning, many of them only to discover that Princess Diana has passed away. Prue? Thanks, Jim. Let's take a look at how, as you mentioned, the British people were given this news this morning. This is how the BBC gave the news to the British public. This is BBC Television from London. Diana, Princess of Wales, has died after a car crash in Paris. The French government announced her death just before five o'clock this morning. Buckingham Palace confirmed the news shortly afterwards. In a statement, the palace said, the Queen and Prince of Wales are deeply shocked and distressed by this terrible news. Normal programs have been suspended throughout the morning while we bring you the latest news and reaction. Diana, Princess of Wales, and that was how the British people woke up this morning to find out that Princess Diana had passed away. That was broadcast about 15 minutes ago. Well, CNN has also spoken to Buckingham Palace, which has confirmed that Prince Charles, Prince William and Prince Harry have all been told of the passing away of Princess Diana. And, uh, of course, Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip as well. The palace confirmed that they were deeply shocked and distressed at the death of Diana. Also, reaction from Prime Minister Tony Blair. He said, and let me quote from a statement, I am utterly devastated. The whole of our country, all of us, will be in a state of shock and mourning. Diana was a wonderful, warm and compassionate person who people, not just in Britain, but throughout the world, loved and will mourn as a friend. And also, the Foreign Secretary of Britain, who is travelling in Asia at the moment, Robin Cook, said, I am greatly shocked by this news. Our first thoughts must be with the children. And, uh, of course, it is very early here still, a quarter to seven on Sunday morning. People are just waking up. But already on Talkback Radio, people have been expressing their heartfelt concern, especially for the sons, William and Harry. All right. We're also hearing, uh, of course, the, the uh, announcements coming in. Uh, President Fidel Ramos of the Philippines, Prime Minister John Howard of Australia, President Clinton, of course, all expressing shock and sadness at the news of uh, Princess uh, Diana's passing. And, of course, the tragedy, the tragic way that it happened uh, with Dodi al Fayed uh, alongside her, their driver, also killed there in a car wreck in Paris. Uh, a bodyguard of Princess Diana reportedly uh, suffered serious injuries. He is still in the hospital. We don't have late word on him. As we continue to monitor the situation, Prue, I want to bring you in again and just ask you uh, about the formalities that obviously have to be dealt with uh, uh, with a funeral. Uh, Perhaps there is no other way to deal with this. It's going to be, uh, regardless of what protocol might be involved, it's going to be a very large, a very sad event in Britain. Yes, but also a matter of the discretion of the family. Not necessarily a large event. It could be, in fact, a small family event. We don't know at this stage. And you must factor into to your, your thinking exactly the way in which Princess Diana died. Uh, for example, one would have to rule out a lying in state. Uh, obviously, it was a, a very a gruesome death. Uh, we simply do not know at this stage how the royal family and her own family will deal with this. 
Thanks, Prue. We're going to switch now back to Paris and Jim Bitterman, uh, who is going to uh, be talking again some hours ago. Uh, he was with, uh, excuse me, uh, this was a tape-recorded uh, interview that Jim Bitterman had done some time ago, uh, talking with an eyewitness. This came in as we were really holding a vigil here. Uh, Princess Diana was known to be in serious condition, undergoing treatment in a Paris hospital, and the eyewitnesses were describing uh, to Jim and to all of us the scene of the crash. They were there within moments. Uh, we saw a large blue Mercedes, darker blue, and the airbag on the uh, passenger side was deployed, as he said. And we saw a lot of um, liquid on the ground. And when Tom went into the tunnel to help, um, we didn't know who it was at the time. Um, somebody came running towards us, speaking French, shouting in French. And we thought, for some reason, it was going to blow up in the tunnel. Um, we stood there. Um, watched a little bit and police came about seven to ten minutes later ambulance about fifteen minutes later and uh, that's pretty much I, we took a picture we stood there and, and helped out and and he was a little bit closer to the scene than I was basically Joanna just pretty much said everything except for that I was one of the first three people in the tunnel the, the driver was unconscious um, sounding the horn for like probably almost two minutes like she said, I approached the car, got probably 30 feet away, noticed liquid and a gentleman running at me, uh, shouting and waving to leave the tunnel. Uh, we exited, sat at the mouth of the tunnel. It was probably three, four minutes after that the police arrived. Now, maybe you can shed some light on something that we have been speculating about all evening long, and that is whether or not there were paparazzi following, let's just say photographers, following uh, the princess and Dodi El Faya. Did you see any evidence that would support the theory that they were being pursued by photographers? Well, initially when I approached the vehicle, the gentleman was, who was taking pictures was there immediately at following the accident. Before I could run from the, the mouth of the tunnel, 50 yards approximately to the 30 yards from the car, he so was the already... So saying within seconds of the oh, crash? Within seconds. Mm -hmm. And uh, his ca uh, camera equipment was far too sophisticated for a tourist or someone not professional, I assume, associated with the press. Clarence Williams, what did, what did you say? That, that was uh, a particular, uh, we commented in the car at the camera because we were all driving around uh, being tourists uh, celebrating Michael's birthday. And this guy was taking pictures immediately with this huge camera. And between that and, and the arguments that were going on about 30 yards away, between look like uh, someone with a camera and someone else. Uh, we thought it was just a driver or whatever. We didn't know, but it was just uh, this, this loud argument. Being that it was in the tunnel, uh, you could hear everything somewhat animated. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the crash itself was uh, extremely serious to be noticed. Our driver, who was French, even commented that that was the first time he personally had seen something that serious and of that magnitude. Yeah. And uh, uh, I know he gave himself the cross because we sat there. Uh, he stopped the car for about, oh, a good 45 to a seconds to a minute. Uh, and we were parallel, 30, about 30 yards away. Uh, from what I could tell when I was standing out there, it appeared the car was still on its wheels, but it may have flipped over in the process. Do you think it flipped over? Was there evidence? It, was, it ran into the wall. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like it had gone yeah. Yeah. It just kind of chilled it. It was facing the opposite direction. Yeah. It was facing yeah. definitely. And the, was gentleman was still sit the gentleman was still sitting in the car, yeah. or uh, semi-conscious, so it didn't flip over, but it was up against the wall, and debris was on both sides of the tunnel, wouldn't you say? Yeah. 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 It's Mercedes. Mercedes. Blue Mercedes. Yeah. Dark blue Mercedes. And it, and it, um, for about two minutes, the horn sounded, so we assumed that somebody was against the horn, pressing the horn, pressing the horn, mm -hmm. and then that stopped. Mm -hmm. And um, we had no idea until we got back to our hotel. So, yeah. Would you have guessed that the car would have been going at high speed to incur the damage that it did? Screech. We heard the screech, yeah. and it was, I'd say, about a full, long five to seven seconds. Uh, and then we heard the crash, mm -hmm. the huge, like, an explosion. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm... I'm assuming there was some something in their way. The That's why they were screeching. It looked like it would, the condition of the car, you would have thought that there was at least a head-on or that it hit uh, some sort of cement embankment, the, the way yeah, it was crushed. Yeah, that's what we thought first, was the yeah. way it was uh, situated. I think it had turned around, because it was mm -hmm. facing the same direction we were going. In the opposite mm -hmm. line. Yeah. Plus, there wasn't no other car wrecked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we can no see. sign of any other yeah. traffic in the area. Yeah. Than, yeah. Yeah. The car yeah. stopped maybe 50 yards up front, another right. car maybe 50 yards in yeah. back, but nothing 
How about the motorcycle? Because there was talk that the paparazzi, the photographers that may have been following were on a motorcycle. Is there any evidence of a motorcycle driver around? Well, it's hard to say because the law here in Paris, you have to stop for a taxi. Time, no one realized you didn't realize who was in the car. I was here in the hotel and heard it on CNN that there was an accident uh, involving the princess. Uh, and we didn't know if this was the one until we saw a scene of the tunnel, and then that's when we realized that that was, the, that was the one that we saw. It looked like at first we thought it went between the pillars, you know, yeah. as the way it was facing the same direction we were going, and there's like pillars like this, and we, we saw it in between and up against the wall. So we assumed it went between yeah. the pillars. Later did we find out that it was going opposite and direction. There was a lot of arg arguing yeah. on the yeah. scene, a lot, a lot of loud arguing, arguing mm -hmm. on the That's scene. That's going on. And it was directly after the, we thought it was just the, if it were, you know, somebody else involved in the accident, they were arguing whose fault it was, because yeah. we couldn't understand the language. That was, it was, it was But it was loud. Had you been loud. there, you would have found that unusual mm -hmm. for just the you, And it was definitely with the photographer. Mm -hmm. right. And Tom, you stayed until the first ambulance got on the scene, or did you stay after that? And right, you stayed until the first ambulance got there. Mm -hmm. But the gentleman who was um, telling us to exit the tunnel, uh, inter re entered the tunnel and was shouting at the cameraman and trying to console the passenger. Mm -hmm. So he was talking to someone in the car. Yeah. Someone was conscious, well, obviously. He was like, kneeling over them, um, consoling them, right? Their feet were out of the car, and they were like pinned between the passenger seat and the airbag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This must have taken you by surprise. What were you doing just before uh, we were on our way to dinner? Actually, late night dinner here in Paris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was what after midnight, was it? Mm -hmm. And it's it's not rare. Um, if you, if anybody's ever been to Paris, the speed of oh. the I mean, it's it's outrageous. <laughs> I'm that. from San Diego. I know what they speed drive. is on the freeway, but there's no there's no caution whatsoever. Yeah, we whatsoever. Found that out. And there there are motorcycles going through cars, in and out of cars. And so we were, if we saw a motorcycle, it was just common. It wasn't out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. you know? That interview was done just a matter of hours ago as we were still keeping a vigil. Princess Diana was reported to be in serious condition in a Paris hospital. And then just about two hours ago, word came from that hospital that Princess Diana, age 36, the mother of the heir to the British throne had passed away. She and Dodi al Fayed were traveling through the streets of Paris, along with their driver, of course, and a bodyguard of the princess. And they were being pursued by motorcyclists, apparently paparazzi, photographers who were trying to get a snapshot of the famous couple. Somewhere things went horribly wrong at around the Pont de Alma or the Alma Bridge along the Seine River. At high speed, very high speed, the Mercedes-Benz automobile in which the princess was riding crashed into a cement pylon. It spun around and ended up against the wall of the, uh, the bridge there. It's actually a, an underpass and uh, completely smashed the car. The roof of the car was smashed down. The windshield was smashed out. The radiator was pushed back uh, into the lap, practically, we heard a report saying that, into the lap of the uh, passenger in the uh, front seat. Princess Diana was taken uh, to the hospital where doctors fought to save her life. The British ambassador to France was there with his wife at her side, as was the French interior minister. They were unable to save her life. We, we understand it was about three and a half hours ago uh, that uh, now that she had passed away. They actually withheld the news of that for about two hours in an effort to allow the family uh, to be notified for some time, some breathing room perhaps there uh, for the, the family and for Britain. Now Britain is having to deal with the shock and the pain of the loss of Princess Diana. I understand that we now have someone on the, on the line here Sir Bernard Ingham, the uh, former press secretary to Margaret Thatcher. Your thoughts on this day, sir? Well, I think it's an appalling day. It's an appalling disaster in the sense that uh, we should have lost the uh, Princess of Wales. Uh, it is only fair to say that I have been critical of her uh, in the past and uh, her arrangements and uh, her approach to the media, but nobody, nobody would have wished this upon anyone. Uh, and our thoughts go out to 
uh, her sons, who are apparently in Balmoral with uh, their father, uh, they've had to put up with a great deal in their short lives, and uh, this, I think, is a great tragedy for them. How will Princess Di be remembered? Uh, well, I suppose she will be remembered as a very tragic figure, uh, while at the same time being one who uh, made compassion uh, for people in trouble and distress around the world her business. Um, I think that she will have those two, those two memories will be mostly about tragedy and, uh, and compassion. Was Princess Diana in a unique position to put forward not only the image of Britain, but so many of the humanitarian causes that she championed? Well, she was in a unique position in the sense that um, uh, she was a prominent, indeed you might say a world figure, who um, attracted enormous media interest. Um, and therefore, she was in a unique, certainly unrivaled position to convey messages. Uh, what I think is worries me as a journalist myself uh, is the role uh, which uh, my much maligned profession uh, may have played in her death. Uh, and that, I think, is a matter for concern even now. Uh, when we don't know the full facts, but they, that she does seem to have been uh, pursued by paparazzi. And of course, this would not occur if there were not a market, and a very lucrative market, uh, for pictures of uh, international personalities, and not least uh, Princess Diana, uh, throughout the world. And um, I'm afraid that we are going to get a reputation of hounding people to death. How do you think that Princess Diana will be remembered by the people of Britain? I think I would say as a tragic but uh, figure of great compassion who sought out uh, the people who were suffering in the world and tried to bring comfort to them. Do you think that perhaps more than any others, the British people had a compassion for Princess Diana's problems? Uh, I think that she was, uh, she had been for a long time taken to the hearts of the nation, but I think that uh, latterly uh, antics uh, with the media and um, some of her behavior had begun to um, bring about criticism. Uh, and therefore, I don't think that she was, as it were, at the zenith of her affection in the minds of the nation, uh, but nonetheless, there was a well, very, very, very substantial reservoir of, uh, of affection for her. Well, nonetheless, as you were pointing out there, there were mistakes that were made, but at the same time, uh, Sir Bernard, you, it's got to be pointed out, I would think, that there were many people in the royal family who made mistakes. Princess Diana, for whatever reason, appeared to be the most popular of all of them, regardless of what mistakes she made. Now, there, were, well, there are a very large number of people who make mistakes in handling the media right across the world. That is perfectly true. Um, and you can't say that the royal family have handled uh, the media uh, with uh, consummate ease uh, during recent years. That's perfectly fair. All right. Sir Bernard Ingham former press secretary to Margaret Thatcher. Thank you for joining us with your thoughts about Princess Diana on this tragic day. We're going to have more coverage of this story coming up right after this short break. Stay with us. This is the place to turn for the events shaping your world today. This is CNN.